All right, how's it going, guys? Figured I'd give you an update on my rain gutter grow system and show you guys what I got growing so far. Um, although it's not in my system, we'll start here. This is my pomegranate. I started from seed about a year ago. Um, it was under attack from some type of some type of caterpillar, I believe, as you can see, uh, with the holes in the leaves. But it's a pretty resilient plant, so um, hopefully once the soil dries up a bit. I'm gonna transplant it to uh, behind the house. Here we have two types of sweet potatoes going. Uh, I believe this is the Okinawan sweet potato and this is just the standard yellow sweet potato. So I'm waiting till the slips get about 12 inches long and from there I'll sprout the the roots on the slips in another container of water and transplant them to this bucket here to see if they'll do well in the RGGS. So on my primary crop with whatever type of system I've been using over the past one, one to two years has been this plant. Uh, this is Amaranthus, aka Amaranth. This specific variety is called Golden Giant. Uh, originally I grew this plant specifically for the seeds, kind of like quinoa, but um, the more research I did, I found out that actually a lot of the benefits come from eating the leaves as well. And since I started growing this as a tester in the rain gutter grow system, the results have been quite extraordinary. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this, but the stalks are actually, mm, I want to say about an inch to an inch and a half thick. Uh, as I said, I've been growing this for about a year and I've never seen the leaves get this big. In ideal conditions, this plant should grow to about maybe five or seven feet tall and have uh, about a quarter cup of seeds uh, per plant, but um, we'll see what happens. Over here, we have mapacho tobacco or sacred tobacco. Uh, I figured I'd test growing tobacco here in Hawaii since we have similar uh, a similar climate and environment to where the best tobacco is produced. And from what I've seen with regards to the photos of Mapacho, this is actually exceptional growth as well. Uh, from the plants I did see grown on other islands in Hawaii, the leaves are quite small and really, I guess not this uh, prolific, I guess you would say, um, if you can tell. The leaves are about 12 inches long and about eight inches wide so this is exceptional for this species and it's still a baby um, so we got still a lot of growing time to go and uh, if anyone's interested I can do a special video on this type of tobacco from what I've learned over here we have some blue jade corn this is actually one of the original types of container corn they only grow to about two to four feet but I'm hoping I get the same results that Larry got with his type of a uh, container corn where it gets actually bigger so this is my second time growing this I was unsuccessful with just a standard gardening system so hopefully with the RGGS it will be able to produce for us over here we just have a uh, I believe this is sweet cherry peppers um, I've decided that my primary crops would consist of amaranth and various types of cherries so um, just because Hawaii has the ideal climate for peppers. And uh, moving on, we have some poppy I'm growing for cooking. Um, I like to use the seeds in baking, so we'll see how that goes. We also have uh, some wild, they call this here Hawaiian tomatoes or wild tomatoes, but it's actually just a type of wild currant tomato. Um, this is a prolific type of tomato plant, and the good thing about this is that because it is a wild variety, um, a lot of people like to recommend this tomato plant because it has a very high tolerance to many of the diseases commonly affecting tomato plants. As you can see though, I have, I've always had a problem with leaf miners here, so I'm working on finding a way to control them, but even with the infestation of leaf miners, the plant is still, still bolting up and getting stronger every day. Down here we have uh, Swiss chard, so my primary source of green leaves in my garden have always been Swiss chard. 
and uh, just because I have had too many problems with kale. Kale is a more cool other plant, so what I've found out is that Swiss chard actually does a lot better. So here we have three types of Swiss chard. Uh, golden Swiss chard, perpetual Swiss chard, and to the right, uh, this is the bright light Swiss chard. So as of right now, the perpetual seems to be doing the best. So we'll see how it turns out in a few weeks. Here we have California puppy. I'm um, growing this just as an experiment. I heard this is a very good plant to use as a ground cover. and It has uh, other uses as well. Um, but more so I just found the flower very attractive. And because behind our house uh, there's been quite a bit of erosion since we uh, basically trimmed back the trees. So I'm trying to find a good ground cover that is not only attractive but uh, very easy to propagate. And here we have, uh, I believe this is a black beauty eggplant. Not really impressed with the eggplant. Um, as you can see, more leaf miner infestation on this. But it's just not doing too well. I heard it takes a very long time to grow eggplant. So um, hopefully it can bounce back. And here we have the startings of what will hopefully be a beet bed. Uh, we have three different types of beets. I believe in this row it should be golden beets. In the back row, I believe is uh, cylindra beets, and down the middle, uh, it should be chigoa beets. So, like Swiss chard, um, I, I mostly harvested beets just for the um, to juice them up or eat the leaves. So, hopefully, these guys aren't doing too good right now. So, hopefully, uh, they'll bounce back, which they tend to do. All right, and here we have, uh, I believe this is Atomic Red Carrots. So someone on the forum or in the group page actually talked about how they just threw the carrots basically into the soil or into the bucket in one of their RGGS systems and just let it go. So I'm trying to experiment with that as well as I was unsuccessful in the past with carrots. So hopefully I have the same results because I do love some carrots. So And over here... Actually, all these these next three plants are all peppers as well. So with this crop, uh, with that pepper right there, and these four right here, and I believe I'm starting some other seeds as well. I'm um, focusing primarily on sweet peppers, and hopefully with the next uh, with the next batch that I do sprout and grow, I'm going to start focusing more on hot peppers just to have a good variety. Uh, another thing to note. Some people ask me why I'm focusing on peppers is because uh, basically it was started by a, a page I, or a video I watched on YouTube. I think it was John Cullen's videos on growingyourgreens.com. But he was explaining why it's a lot more beneficial to grow peppers versus growing tomatoes because of the nutritional profile and basically how easy it is to grow them. So. Um, we'll see how it does. Like I said, they should be ideal for Hawaii's weather. And if they're successful, then they'll be also one of my primary crops. And then finally, uh, just trans transplanted these guys yesterday. But uh, these are some uh, black zucchinis. Um, I noticed that zucchinis actually sprouted extremely fast. But I'm not sure if they have some leaf miner problems going on as well we'll find out but um hopefully these guys can bounce back as well um oh another thing to in future future attempts to sprout more things uh, i might also focus on squash because as you can see there's a fence line running all the way around my property so hopefully uh if we can be successful with squash uh, that can be another staple crop as well and finally, just as a random plant over here, uh, this is a type of passion fruit called maypop. It's actually quite common in the southern United States and throughout the, I guess you could say, basically from the south to the north, it's quite common. Uh, the reason I grew this is because of the the type of uh, tea it makes. It actually forms as a natural relaxant that isn't uh, habit forming or anything like that. So. Um, I personally try not to use too many over-the-counter drugs or 
man-made drugs. I try to keep everything natural, so I'm also growing plants for medicinal purposes, uh, legal medicinal purposes in case any other individuals are wondering. So yes, we'll see how this does, but like the other plants, or actually uh, like the pomegranate plant, which actually used to be right next door to this guy right here. It's just getting attacked severely with, uh, I'm assuming these are caterpillars because I had a major problem with them during the summer. So uh, we'll see if we can control them over the next couple weeks and basically from now on. But yeah, so basically that's my garden. Uh, we still got a lot of space to fill. As you can see, we still got maybe mm, about 16 feet of space left. And hopefully, uh, if we're successful with this, we can start expanding out and incorporating more of the yard as a means to grow fruits and vegetables versus uh, ornamentals. So, yeah, if you guys got any questions, let me know and uh, send me a message and I'll try and get back to you.